<laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to the channel once again. It's your girl Maybe Leah. If this is your first time coming across my channel, you're welcome. I do hope you decide to subscribe. And if you are a returning subscriber, you guys know that I love you. It's so good to have you here. Welcome back. So today's video, as you guys already saw in the title, is about what's going on in Tunisia. Right now, there's an anti-racism process going on in Tunisia. Yes, this might be shocking to some people. It's, to me, it's kind of shocking too because yeah rate to the season happening in africa that's a thing tunisia is located in northern africa a lot of the northern african people do not look like the rest of us you know sub-saharan people who are basically dark skin um a lot of the northern african people in countries like algeria morocco libya and um, tunisia that we're talking about they have this arabian lineage so they look more pale skin and you know they have more proximity to whiteness and obviously there's going to be racism anywhere you have people who look like this and people who look like this there's definitely going to be racism and it is sad that this is happening in africa and then the alarming thing about this whole situation is that it was triggered by a statement a speech that was given by the president of the country imagine the president of an african country coming out to give a speech that incites ray to the cyst attacks on people that look like this in africa let me play the video right now <laughs> وليجهات المشبوهة لضرب الدولة التونسية تحثوا اليوم على القضايا المتعلقة بالأفاق نحن أثرنا على أنفسنا وقت الكوفيد نوزع الأدوية ونوزع على الأفاق ونحن نرتزوا بانتماءنا الأفريقي ولكن هم في بعض الحال تأويلهم اليوم هم يحب يغيروا التركيبة الديموغرافية لتونس وترتيبوا خذاوا فلوس كما قال خذاوا فلوس في عديد ال القطاعات الاخرى لضرب الدوله التونسيه ولضرب الشعب التونسي après le discours du président nous sommes toujours attaqués nous sommes toujours attaqués par par la population donc nous avons peur a surge in attacks arbitrary arrests assault and slurs and abuse on social media targeting sub-saharan students and workers in Tunisia so what's going on the hostility was triggered by President Said's inflammatory remarks on migrants. He said they were behind most of the country's crime and ordered a crackdown on illegal migration. He also claimed, without evidence, a criminal plot was underway to undermine the country's demographics. As a result, migrant African workers are losing their jobs and getting kicked out of rented homes. Foreign students are afraid to walk the streets and climate of fear has taken over. The situation is so dangerous, Ivory Coast and Guinea are even flying their citizens home on a special flight as a precaution. Meanwhile, the Tunisian government refutes accusations of racism, labeling criticism from the EU, Washington and the African Union as foreign interference. Noteworthy is that black Tunisians make up 10% of the country's population and hundreds have defied a protest ban to demonstrate in the capital. But this latest turmoil is not the only source of anger. Discontent has been brewing over a series of hardline policies by the president. Two years ago, Said dissolved the democratically elected parliament and grabbed further powers. He also imprisoned a wide range of critics, including opposition politicians, journalists, and civil society activists. Once the champion of the Arab Spring, Tunisia again finds itself leaning towards authoritarianism. And people's anger is being reignited. Because of where Tunisia is located, a lot of African people migrate to Tunisia with the hopes of using that as a route to enter into European countries. I think Italy is usually the country these people migrate to from Tunisia, and that's Tunisians included. So it's not just like it's only, you know, dark skinned Africans that are doing this. So you see a lot of Africans going there with the hopes of, you know, migrating out of Africa. And then maybe in some cases it doesn't work out and they are stuck there for some reason 
while some people just go there for schooling education for businesses and all of that and i mean it's africa if everything was right and if these borders were not created by the palm colored colonizers normally we should all be one nation the whole continent of africa should be one nation africa should be free to move from one part of africa to another and i wish it gets to that point where that happens but that is how it's supposed to be so now the president obviously is not okay with the amount of you know sub-saharan africans that are in his country so he came out to make that speech before i go any further let me just play some reactions so nigerians and other african countries in tunisia are running away from tunisia very similar to what has happened in south africa in the past xenophobic, xenophobic attacks but this time is much worse now these people claim that they are victims of extreme racial attacks and they now want to come back home so president kais we plead with you if your government does not want africans to now migrate to tunisia for study and to leave please inform every african country and send them back so tunisian government where you are currently the head is being accused of leading racist agendas against migrants and making racist comments now some of them have said that they cannot live a day without being afraid of losing their lives because of mob attacks and they are being kicked out of houses the way they paid rent and made to live homeless so let's talk about tunisia and their anti racism protests mm -hmm. so to some this may come as a surprise to others it's not <laughs> but um i'm going to say this anytime i hear news about an african country that is heavily influenced by arabic culture and um some islamic uh values i know that the way black people in those country countries uh is going to be treated is horrendous like big anti-black vibes big bombastic side eye vibes and i'm going to give you an example so when morocco which is up there um, in Northern Africa, made it to the semi-finals uh, in the World Cup. A lot of African people were celebrating, uh, you know, because Morocco is in Africa. And so they were the first African country, mind you, to make it to the semi-finals in uh, uh, Qatar uh, during the World Cup, right? Why, why did a lot of black people from these countries here, right, experience anti-black racism from people in Northern countries? Why? Is Morocco not in Africa? Is this not a map of Africa? Right? Now, that's just an example of how a lot of people, a lot of Arabic people who reside in countries such as uh, Tunisia, Algeria, uh, Morocco, as an example, treat uh, black people, Egypt as well. It makes no sense and it's just at this point kind of silly, right? Because you're in Africa and you're telling people in Africa that they cannot migrate between the countries in which they are born in, uh, which their ancestors have cohabited for centuries and ages. It's just strange. It's real strange. And today I am here to talk about um, Tunisia, the thing that is happening in Tunis these days. It's so sad to hear about a leader of an African nation discriminating other Africans in their own country, using such kind of words you know, it's so sad to be seen differentiating us from other people. Though I can't say everyone is bad, but we can openly say that most of the Arab people show hatred to us. They make themselves, they are practicing the religion of, uh, of, of, of Allah or the teaching of the Prophet Rasulullah but most of them are not practicing it. This is so sad that to see that this Arab world is discriminating African. These days, we are seeing what a leader, what a president of Africa in a country called Tunisia said about Africans. It's so sad that we are incompatible with their culture so we cannot be in Tunis. Tunis meaning Tunis belong to only Arabs, then let them remove themselves from Africa. He cannot say that they are Africans. If not the uselessness of African leaders, when I say this, so many people say, Spanimaika, you don't have respect for leaders. You don't have respect for elders. 
Come on. I have no respect for any stupid leader in Africa who is there to against the African resources or African citizens. Who is there to help white peoples to destroy Africa? I have no respect for them. I have no respect for no illiterate leader, ignorance leader in Africa. I have no respect for them. And they should never deserve, think like they deserve respect from me. If you look whatever is whatever was happening to our black peoples, our fellow black peoples in Tunis, it's very bad, right? Because Tunis, one of the Tunis uh, women was, I don't know, was killed by black peoples. And in that way, Tunis government says they don't need black people, they have to send every black man away from Tunis. All this is happening because the leaders of black African countries are useless to black Africans. If not, how many black people that Tunis peoples have killed? And I want to ask this question, when do our leaders are going to react the killing of their peoples? When are they going to tell them the truth? The Arab countries, when are they going to tell them the truth? When our leaders are going to come out and tell the Arab countries the truth and tell Europeans the truth and tell Americans and UK the truth? You killed my peoples, I didn't complain. But when one of your citizens was murdered by my peoples, then you said, my peoples will go away from your country. You started maltreating them, sending them away. But you killed my peoples. I give respect to those who he belongs to. I don't give respect to those leaders who don't care about me and my peoples in Africa. The unity of Africa will stand either leaders like it or, or they don't like it. This is making most of the African leaders being afraid now. African citizens are coming together to unite. And that's what we must do to unite and send away all these old cargoes that are enemies of Africa and baking Europeans and Americans and UK for money and destroy their own peoples. Now, a lot of people have come out to criticize this, including the African Union, because we do not understand how Africans can express rage to the season against fellow Africans. I would have called this xenophobia, but because... We do not have, you know, similar phenotypes and lineage. I mean, they have the Arabian lineage while we are sub-Saharan. Because of this, we can actually use the word ray to the season in this situation because obviously there's a difference. But at the end of the day, we are all Africans. And the shocking thing to me is that when I went to the comment section of a lot of these videos discussing this particular issue, I saw a lot of Tunisians that agreed with what he was saying. I mean, a lot. Like, they're not even afraid to come out and say, yes, we don't want you guys here. You leave our country or that's those that were able to write in english because i don't think english is their legal franca over there i don't know will i say that i'm shocked i don't think anything is going to shock me anymore in this world being that with the kind of things that i talk about on this channel anything is possible when it comes to human beings because apparently the heart of man is wicked and selfish it's shameful that african leaders are comfortable enough to come and do this and now the lives of these sub-saharan africans in their countries are at risk People are being attacked. People are being threatened to the extent that some countries had to go and basically whisk their people out of there. And I'm happy that some countries are looking out for their citizens to the extent of doing it. Funny enough, I don't even know if my country is going to do something like that. I'm Nigerian and yes, they say we are the giant of Africa, but I don't know if my country is going to do that because I don't think we've had such a leader that has expressed that amount of passion and love towards us. I mean, look at the whole answer situation. I don't even know if our country is among those countries that went to save their people. But well, yeah, there it is. And kudos to the African Union for speaking up against this. And also kudos to the Tunisians who went out on the street to protest this whole raid to the season towards their fellow Africans. <laughs> There is no place for in a country that has managed to fight its way to freedom mm -hmm. after years of dictatorship and definitely there's no space for racism in our administrations, in our president's speech and stance and there's no space for violence for anyone, Tunisians and non-Tunisians. This is a land that should be open for everyone.
But then again, as much as there are a lot of Tunisians who are condemning the action of their president and the speech of the president, there are some of them who agree. Take a look at this video. So you guys can see. At this point, we know that even the Arabs own slaves. And just to make it clear, let me even go on Google right now and read this out to you guys. I'm reading from www.africanews.com. It says, the Tunisian Forum for Economic and Social Rights reacted to President Kai Said's comment accusing sub-Saharan African migrants of causing crime while posing a demographic threat. The way I interpret the whole demographic threat is that he's concerned that these sub-Saharan Africans are going to change the demographic composition of his Tunisian people. So maybe maybe the Tunisian population might, is at risk of not being as Arab as it used to be because of the influx of these sub-Saharan migrants. That's the way I interpret it. So it says here that Tunisia is a key departure point for African migrants seeking to reach Europe on what the United Nations says is the world's deadliest migration route. According to official Italian figures, more than 32,000 migrants, including 18,000 Tunisians, attempted the crossing from Tunisia to Italy last year. So you guys see what I'm talking about. That is why they have a lot of Africans, you know, a lot of migrants in Tunisia. But nothing can justify him coming out to make such comments. It would have been okay if he said, if you're here illegally, if you don't have your papers, we're going to be kicking you out. That is fine. But for him to come out and say that they are posing as criminals and they are, you know, a threat to the demographic of your people, thereby inciting attacks and segregation and discrimination against your fellow Africans. You see, Africa continues to disappoint me, I will not lie, because... Basically, our leaders are upholding what the white colonial masters came here and did. And they are sticking to it. And that is why Africa is still where we are. That is why black people are still where we are. Because instead of us to be thinking as a unit, we are thinking about all oh, my people. This is mine. That is yours. Can you guys imagine that it is more expensive to travel within Africa to a lot of other African countries than it is to travel to another continent, to travel to America or to Europe? It is more expensive. See, I'm not even going to get into all of that. This is just very shameful. It is sad that this is where we are in the year 2023. If rape to the season can happen in Africa, where can it not happen? This is supposed to be our home. This is supposed to be our land. It is still happening. Anyway, you guys, let me know what you think in the comment section. Did you hear about this? Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you guys think because I really want to read from you guys. Just let me know. Drop your comments in the comment section. Please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up share as well um subscribe if you haven't also turn on notification that way youtube will let you guys know whenever i drop a new video and i will see you guys in my next video bye